Hey there guys, I am Clement from The Graphic Technologies and this video I am going to be teaching you guys how to make a really cool nav bar. And that is exactly what I have on my right. And as you can see it's very responsive, uh, um, responsive um, design. And if it goes below 600 pixels, a toggler appears. And if you click on the toggler, it does a little cool animation. Then it, click on it again, it goes back to the original state. Yeah, so it's really cool. We really see this in a lot of websites. And uh, it's a really good way to add to the user experience. So uh, I'm going to be building this today. And uh, I already have my um, files set, although they're all empty. I'm going to be, going to be doing this from scratch. And, and at, at the end of this video, I'm going to be leaving the um, link to my to, to this code in my GitHub repository in the description below, so you guys can check that out. And I also encourage you guys to code along with me. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so I'll just uh, go ahead and start my map, my, my markup. Uh, yeah, so well, I'll just start with a simple HTML5 templates as you guys can see I have Emmet installed um, so um, if you don't know how to install Emmet I encourage you to go to my HTML and CSS um, playlist where I um, delve very deep into HTML and CSS I hope you guys check it out on my channel so hey, I'm just gonna give this a title of um, a cool nav bar yeah that's good enough for now and I am going to just go ahead and start um, added in the body tag and I'm going to give this a nav of yeah a nav tag and I am going to inside a nav tag I'm going to create the logo space and the logo container so I'm just going to say logo caps doesn't really matter I just like I'm, I'm starting out my class in capital letters for the start and the image should um, link to my logo, which is at images slash dtech logo dot png. And you can use whatever image of your choice. Um, I'm gonna say dtech as the alternate text, and I'm gonna give this a width of um, say say 150 pixels. Yeah, that's good enough for me. So this is just the div, which is going to be um, on the nav bar, and this is also going to have um, a UL containing all the lists, and two ULs actually, one for the desktop and one for the dropdown, which you can see here. This is the dropdown, and this is the desktop UL. It's it um, is best practice to just call this by. Um, by a list because there are a list of links we can be using div tags for link for a list of links so there are a list of links so this should be an, an ordered list and in an anchor tag so without too much talk I'll just go ahead and create the um, desktop um, unordered list and I'm using Emmet as you can see so to make my code faster I want to create um, four um, list tags, each containing uh, an anchor tag. So yeah, have this. You can see the beauty of Emmet. I call this home. Uh, hash again. I call this about. Um, a link to a dummy page. That's what the hash is for. It's a link to a dummy page. It doesn't really go. So yes, contact. So I have my UL for my desktop, so I'll just copy this and repeat this exact same thing again for my drop down. Yeah, so I have a desktop and drop down. And uh, one more thing I want to do inside this, um, inside the nav bar is to create my toggler div. Toggler div is actually a div within a div. Um, scratch that. Um, it's a div within a div, and the div has an ID of toggler. Uh, yeah, so in this div, it, three, it contains three divs, 
yeah, this 3D is given different stylings. It's just for the sake of um, CSS stylings. So yeah, I think that's all. Um, that's all the markup I'm going to use for now. But I'll just add a script tag that's um, that directs to our that links our index.js file, which is our JavaScript file, and a link tag in the header section that links to our style.css file. If I save this and I load it, this is the new product I'm working on. You can see that I have my logo, I have my um, desktop links, and I have my drop-down links. And I'm going to style this because they really look ugly now, but at least they communicate a message that I'm creating a, a link. And that's the whole point of your um, HTML markup, to create a message of what exactly you're doing in your browser. So without any further ado, I am going to start with my CSS styling. And I'm going to give um, body tag a padding of zero. And I am going to give the margin also zero and the box sizing of zero. And the padding and the margin is for um, is just so um, you can cancel any default stylings by the HTML. And I'm gonna start the nav tag, give it a background of a uh, an off black background basically yeah so and I'm gonna give it an overflow of hidden because I'm gonna be floating a lot of items into it so just to prevent the the floated items from falling through the nav we use an overflow of hidden to keep them in place and for my logo class which I already set here the logo class I am going to give my logo class a uh, float of left because I'm going to float it to the left because you can see in my final work it's toward the left floated towards the left yeah so I'm going to do that and okay that's all the styling for my logo and I'm going to style my ul for my for drop down id yeah, and this will take a list style of none and a margin of zero because HTML um, gives a default margin to all UL tags annoyingly. Give this a display of block and give this a padding of one em zero 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 one em at the top then zero at the left uh, right bottom and left. 1EM basically um, represents 16 pixel. It's a sort of um, unit in CSS. I'm, I, I really I really get into that in my CSS course. You can check that in my channel. And um, yeah, so that's the pattern. What else, what else, what else, what else? Um, I'm mostly going to give it a margin top of, uh, oh no, I'm, I'm not going to touch this right now. I'll just leave it out for a moment. It will, it will make a lot of sense later. I'm going to give it a border top of 0.2 pixels, solid white. It's just for the sake of styling to make it look a little um, attractive. Z index and Z index um, represents how high or low it is on the page. Uh, elements with a higher Z index will show up first to the browser, to the user, than the one with a lower, lower Z index. And uh, it's just for our UL tag, as you can see in our final work. When we click on this, the the drop down comes from below our nav, our UL for our nav um, bar. So I, we want the drop down UL to be lower in terms of Z index than the UL for our desktop. So that's the whole point of our Z index argument there. So Z index is minus hundred. Give this a position of um, absolute so it can be, um, we can use it with respect to the browser. Width of 100%. Yes, and um, I give this a background of 
um, one, 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 the same background as RNAV. And um, what's next? Okay, we can give this a, um, a height of 300 pixel. And I'm going to give this a transition of, let's say, 0.3 seconds. Um, all these. Yeah, so that it can be just like this. In the final work, it comes out in a really cool, cool manner. It doesn't just come out abruptly. It goes up and, and goes down really cool over the span of 0.3 seconds, which is really fast. But at least you can see that the movement is happening. So there's that. I think that is all for our drop down. What's next is uh, let's just give a, a general style to our anchor tag. And generally, I want my anchor tag to be color white and give it a text decoration of obviously none because I really hate these uh, underline that it gives it by default. Although in some cases it's useful, but most times it's not really what I love. And give this a font size of 1.1 em. Also give this a font family of, uh, let's say, Verdana. For some reason I like that font. And uh, yeah, I think that's all for now. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to style my anchor tag inside my drop down specifically my drop down anchor tag for drop down anchor okay my drop down anchor tag i'm going to um give this a pattern of 1 5 pixel 20 pixel that is 1 5 pixel at the top 20 pixel at the right 1 5 pixel at the top at the bottom again, 20 pixel at the left, or you can just shorthand this call this 25 pixel, 20 pixel. This is just to center it um, about the um, nav bar. So, um, what what else? What else? What else? Okay, so um, I'm going to give a hover class, a hover um, styling rather, and a home styling. They should have the same styling. It's just going to be capital letters. Let me see how I. Okay. Oh, and yeah, I, I forgot one thing in my markup. I meant to give my ID anchor tag. That's this one over here. This one over here. I meant to give it an ID of um, home because I'm going to style it specifically because this is the home page basically. So I'm going to give this an ID again. ID. Uh. Or, um, no, two of them can have the same ID, okay? Um, ID of home, let me call this home desktop. And I call this, um, or let me, let me just give it a class of home to save me all the stress. A class of home, home, okay, class. Save and um, use small letters. Home. Yeah, so the hover and the home class, which this should change the dot. Pardon me. The hover and the home class should uh, um, should have the same styling. And I'm going to give it a background of RGB 20, 100, 100. I'm getting the degree of red, green, and blue. And I'm going to give this a border bottom for the sake of styling, anyway. Of um, 5 pixel solid RGB 20, 190, and 100. Uh, if um, you're sort of lost in this in the CSS, you can check out my CSS course, as I've said a million times in this video already, but just to reiterate on this. So, uh, then I'm going to style my toggler. My toggler, uh, I'm going to give it a, a float to the right. Uh, first, let me see how it looks, first of all. Uh, not much change. Uh, suspected. 
Yeah, I just noticed something just now. Uh, a bit of an error in my linkage. I, I, you guys may have noticed this beforehand. It's meant to be dot slash styles in CSS. Yeah, and that was an error. Probably why I didn't reflect any change that I made. So if I save this and I run it, you see we already have a, a number of changes, which um, it looks pretty ugly right now, but we're gonna fix it. But this um, UL I highlighted is for the drop down, as you can tell, and this one is for the desktop, which we will soon um, target in a second. So um, for for the meantime, let me um, fix my toggler to make it vis visible at least. And my toggler should have a flow to the right, just like the final project to the toggler tog toggling. So this is the toggler; it's floated to the right. So I should flip my toggler to the right. And I should give it a margin of 10 pixel, 20 pixel, 0, 0, just to center it on the nav bar. Give it a cursor of pointer and a transition of 0.2 seconds so that it does this really cool thing it's doing over 0.2 seconds. It's really visible and all. So, um, what else? What else? What else? What else? Okay, um, I think I should give this a transition, transform property of um, rotate zero degrees because I'm going to change the rotation very soon and I would like to just reference it here that the rotation is zero degrees um, so um, what else what else what else what else what else okay uh, um, then we're going to style our desktop UL and say and make it invisible for mobile users the reason for this is we're trying to make this app mobile first if I didn't mention it in the first um, few seconds of this video it's gonna be mobile first then we're gonna use media queries to style it for desktops so we want everything on the desktop to be unseen to users of mobile phones and as you can see yeah we have this the um, what you might call it, the the desktop you can see it disappeared when we reloaded the page but if you take this off you can see that this is the desktop it's showing but if i take it off if i put display on it disappears yeah and we have this so yeah i think we're done with our uh styling for our well, mobile users so i'm going to use a media query and do um, add media min width of 600 pixels. And in this, I'm going to style my UL for my dropdown. And the UL for my dropdown is meant to be only seen to mobile users. So in my desktop frame, which is above 600 pixels, I do not want to see it. So I'll give it a display of none. Yeah. So, um, what else? Uh, and then my U of my desktop, I'm going to give it particular styling for desktop. I'm going to give it a display, first of all, of flex, so that it basically uh, uh, stays in this sort of uh, flex box where it can, uh, it can change the positioning in the nav bar easily and they, they arrange themselves in the form of a percentage the yeah just basically that's what it's all about flexbox is sort of like a grid but not a grid as you can see it's pretty cool like um if you look at this you can see this all arranged in a flexbox and i can increase it they're like really um they, they give it a sort of makes it easier to style sort of so yeah display of flex and this display of flex um, usually has a, a default of flex flow of row, meaning that the elements arrange themselves in a row. But you can give it a, um, a flex flow of column. But for this uh, usage, we're going to give it a flex flow of row. Flex flow of row. Back to the original document. Flex flow of row and uh, and 
what are we gonna do what are we gonna do what are we gonna do um yeah text flow of row and i'm gonna give this a uh, justify content which is which um basically i arranges it in the horizontal plane justify content of center so that they can be centered across the horizontal plane and uh and along the vertical align items of center and float right yes it should be floated to the right basically for our desktop floated to the right looks like this is so it's floated to the right like this and uh yeah so floated to the right what else and if, uh, i want to give it a margin right so it doesn't um keep kissing the end of our screen a margin right of let's say uh 50 pixels Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll soon be done with the styling. It seems quite a lot right now, but we'll soon be done first. Margin top so that it can be centered. 25 pixel. Border. We're going to give it a border of none because we gave um, the UL initially a border of a uh, uh, border top of to be just solid white although it won't really affect since it's a different ul but just to be on the safe side uh or i can actually take it out we're only being on the safe side we're radicals so i'm gonna leave that out then for um my desktop anchor tag i'm going to go give this a display of um inline right and a padding of 30 pixels 20 pixels 26 pixels and 20 pixels just to um, give it a, a cool padding and make it have this cool effect of um covering the entire height of the of the nav bar it's really cool so yeah that's just the whole reason for that and uh, what else? Then I'm gonna give my okay. I actually forgot about a particular styling, and I did not style my toggler div. You may have noticed that the toggler div, the div inside the toggler container. So I'm gonna do that very, very quickly right now. Yeah. So toggler div. My toggler div. I'm gonna give it a height very quickly of two pixel. So that each div can have a height of two pixel have a width of 25 pixels, have a margin to separate them from each other of 10 pixels, and have a background to give them color and life of white. Let's fire load this page. Um, yeah, you can see that we already have um, our desktop showing. Our desktop is showing well, but uh, our nav our nav bar, our toggler is still showing for our um, desktops. But we don't want that. So I'm just going to go give um, our toggler here, hash toggler, a display of none for screens above 600 pixel. If I reload this page and if I try to, yeah, you see that, um, you see that. The toggler disappears above 600 pixels and one more thing i want to do for my anchor um for my unordered list i want to give it a for my desktop rather i want to give it a list style of none because you can see there are some annoying dots here still showing up and i don't want that so if i if i save the page and i reload you see that they're all gone so yeah Basically, we, we we've gone really we've done quite a lot, and I think we have we're done basically with the style. But one more thing, I want to give my anchor tag uh, a display of block because I want I want it to um, my anchor tag to have a default of display of block because I want it not to only be having the same uh, the same width as the element. But to occupy the entire line that the element occupies. So if I save this and I reload the page, you see that um, that corrects. 
so it has a display of block it covers the entire page which is exactly what we want yeah this is pretty cool so uh, as you can see the home is it disappeared somewhere under we can bring it out just for the sake of completeness and and that is under the drop down on order list and i can just give it a margin top of uh, let's say 70 70 pixels at the top zero 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 every other place if you see this yeah you can see that it's it's all good if we increase the screen it's looking very well it's looking awesome really so we have our responsive uh we have our responsive um nav bar but there's one more thing we're not taking care of and that is our toddler and um, a toddler is the really cool part we're going to use some javascript and i hope i still have a lot of time i think i may handle that part in the next video of um the the of this um special nav bar session so uh i hope you liked the, i hope you liked this video and understood everything i was talking about but uh, as you can see we're we're on a um, we've made a very good first step into creating a really good nav bar next will be our toggler which is not ready yet and it's ready in a couple seconds so um if you like this video please leave a like I really appreciate that and uh, you know subscribe to my channel thank you very much for watching this video